everybody that was sick, dear Lord, that you'll just put, touch them and, and bring them back to the church, dear Lord. Just pray for the ones that have lost loved ones this week, dear Lord. And that you'll just watch after them and keep them safe, dear Lord. Just pray that you'll just uh, honor each request as they go through Sunday school hours and speak with teachers. Just help them, dear Lord. Just teach us what we need to hear, dear Lord. Bless us all we want to you. Thank you for loving us and dying on the cross for us, dear Lord. Take this money now and just use it for the upbuilding of the kingdom, dear Lord. We'll tell you we love you. Thank you again for being so good to us. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Amen. The Lord. Amen. Let's sing together. That God be the glory. We've got a lot to give him thanksgiving for this morning. Amen. Let's worship together. God be the glory, great things he hath done. O oh, love be the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption. The purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receive. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear him. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done. And great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our victory, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Amen. You may be seated. Y'all pray for the choir as we sing. Sing, He is able first, and then we'll sing, God's been good. is able. what concerns me today he is able more than able to handle anything that comes my way he is able more than able to do much more than I could ever dream he is able what he wants me to be. 
Jesus, your name is power. Jesus, your name is mine. Jesus, your name will break every stronghold. Jesus, your name is life. Jesus, your name is healing. Jesus, your name gives sight. Jesus, your name will free every captive. Jesus, your name is life. Jesus, your name is holy. Jesus, your name brings light. Jesus, your name above every other. Jesus, your name is light. Jesus, your name is light. He is able, more than able, to accomplish what concerns me today. He is able, more than able, to handle anything that comes my way. He is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. He is able, more than able, to make me what he wants me to be. He is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. He is able, Able this morning. God's been good. Let me come here. Hallelujah. God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all. God's been my darkest fears. See, I've had more gains and losses. I've known more joy than hurt as His grace fell down upon me undeserved. God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all. God's been good. For God has been my Father, my Savior, and my friend. His love is my beginning, and his love will be my end. I can spend forever trying. Tell you all he is, but 
but the best way that I can say it is this. God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all. God's been good, God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all, through it all, through it all. God's been good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you been good to you this morning? Y'all stand together and... Uh, you don't have to shake each other's hand, but you can tell everybody how good God's been to you as the choir comes down. Amen. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Amen. Good job. Where grace is more, where grace. 
Aren't you glad uh, that when you have a need that he is always available, amen? I'm glad that he is the God who knows exactly uh, what we need this morning and how to meet that need. The Bible says uh, over in the book of uh, uh, over in the book of Philippians that God is able to meet every need that you have according to his rich and glory uh, by Christ Jesus. Aren't you glad he has it all, amen? Look at somebody and say he's got it all. He has exactly uh, what we need this morning. I just want to praise him, uh, give the Lord glory and honor, and thank God for being so good to us. Thank you, choir, uh, for singing. Thank you for the special song also. I'm glad that he, it points us to know that God is good. How many of you know he's good all the time? Amen. Uh, and I want to praise him for his goodness and his grace and mercy. And so thank you, choir. Also, our choir will be singing in the uh, second service. So uh, anyone that can stay and help with the choir, I know it will be a blessing. I know there's a lot of people out sick. I want, to, I want you to I invite you to take your Bibles and turn uh, to uh, the book of Acts, chapter number 26. The book of Acts, uh, chapter number 26 this morning as we have uh, just been uh, going through the book of Acts, looking at what God did in those days. I want to remind you we serve the same God, amen, and the God that is able to do, uh, the Bible says that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or even think. We have a God who's a miracle working God, amen, and uh, I want to praise him this morning that he is alive and well. I want to praise him that there's not one thing that God cannot do. I want to praise him that he uh, knows every single thing about us and he knows where we are. And I want to praise him as we're going to look in these scriptures and find out that God knows how to intervene in our path. God knows how where, where our crossroads are, how to speak to those in those places. And I just want to praise him and honor him this morning. I want us to go to the Lord in prayer. I just ask God to speak to us through his word. Let's pray together. Father, we love you this morning. Thank you for the word of God. Lord, we are so blessed today, God, that your word is a lamp and a light. And God, this morning we are coming in darkness, Lord, asking you to speak how your light to us. Shine your light in our lives, in our heart, how God, through your word. You said if we would hide your word in our heart, God, that we would not sin against you. And Father, I pray, how God, this morning that you all would speak to all of us in this building this morning. God, everyone who is watching live, God, we pray for all those who are sick. You would lift them up. How God, just touch them and bless them. And Father, I pray you, God, that you are the God of the well. You're the God of the sick. You're the God of the 
day and the night. Uh, the God of the storm and the God of the calm. Lord, we just want to praise you for who you are this morning. God, we want to give you honor and glory for your word. God, that you have preserved so that today we can hear your voice, oh God. Lord, we ask you to speak to us. Father, I pray, Lord, this morning that you would open our eyes to what you want us to see. God, we receive your word. God, bless our churches throughout our community, our county, God, through this country. Uh, this morning, God, as we meet together, may there be a true spiritual awakening. Father, we pray for our missionaries, Lord, serving here and around the world. God, we pray for a fresh anointing upon them today, God, that the gospel may shine forth. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the book of Acts. And God, speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you are glad today for the word of God? Would you say amen? amen. Acts chapter number 25 and 26 are a place where God totally unveils the power of of the gospel. How many of you know the the gospel has power? Amen. How many of you in your life the gospel has redeemed you and give you new life? Would you say amen? And so we are looking today and understanding in the book of Acts. It is kind of like when you watch the book of Acts and see all that is taking place. How we have seen Jesus and all the ministry, the groundwork that had been laid, the word that had been taught, the miracles that had been done. We see Jesus go to the cross and he dies for the sins of the whole world. Are you glad he died for the sins of the whole world? Amen. And then the Bible says he was buried and he rose again on when? The third day, He arose again. We watched that foundation being built in the disciples. We watched as the multitudes heard the word and began to follow Jesus. How, but in the book of Acts, you see what happens. How all of that that took place in the Gospels have come down to that place that the disciples have got a hold that the power of the Gospel can change everything. Amen? There's not a, there's not a soul uh, that is too deep that God's gospel uh, can't rescue them. Uh, there's not a life that cannot be changed. There's not a country that cannot be changed by the power of the gospel. Amen? The word power uh, that we find in uh, the gospel in Romans 1 in verse number 16. Hey, it is a power. It means dynamite. When dynamite happens, it leaves a mark. Would you say Amen. And so what is going on in the book of, of Acts is the gospel uh, that has come in that place of power uh, in Jerusalem is now leaving its mark on the world. And it is going as a sound wave around the world, bringing hope that Jesus is alive and well. And that Jesus is the Savior of the world. We have been watching the Apostle Paul. In the book of Acts, we have uh, we've seen Peter, James, and John. We have uh, watched these disciples as God has blessed them. And then on the road to Damascus, God saves Saul, changes his name to Paul. And from that place, we watch the missionary journeys and, and many coming to know Christ. Now, when you come to verse uh, chapter number 25 and 26 in the book of Acts, Paul, who has been a prisoner, how uh, we looked last uh, week that he was a prisoner under uh, Felix for over two years. Nothing against his record. His record is clean, but Felix had uh, kept him there, and God had a plan. Look at somebody and say, God had a plan. I want you to now look in Acts chapter number 26 and verse number 27 and 28. We're going to look this morning at a very, uh, maybe a strange uh, subject to some, but uh, the distance between heaven and hell. How far do we think heaven is from hell? When you look at it uh, and think about it on a map's perspective, on uh, going from one place to another, how uh, you understand that, wow, if I had to think about going to heaven, uh, which is above every single thing that we can see or imagine uh, in this universe, and then going down to the depths of hell, uh, which at this time we understand from the Word of God uh, is down under us uh, in the center of the earth. And the Bible says in the book of Isaiah that hell enlarges itself uh, every single uh, day. And we are watching that change take place in our earth uh, of the things that are happening. So what is that distance between hell and heaven? How far is it? Well, I want to read in verse number 27 
and 28 in the book of Acts chapter 26. The Bible said, King Agrippa, this is Paul. He is standing before the king. He uh, again is standing as, as one that is standing in a, uh, you could almost get the idea of a Colosseum as he is standing as, as king. Agrippa is, is sitting here uh, waiting to cast judgment upon uh, Paul for all that has happened. As he does, Paul answers King Agrippa this in verse number, uh, verse number 27. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I love what Paul does in verse number 27. He answers for Agrippa. I know that thou believest. Wow. Paul said, I see, I know how that you understand that you believe. Listen to what King Agrippa said in verse at number 28. Then Agrippa said unto Paul. You understand, if you look in verse number 28, you understand something. It does not say then King Agrippa. Can I let you know something about the gospel and about salvation? It is not about who you are in this world. It is not about if you're a king or if you are the, uh, the, the richest man in the world or if you have absolutely nothing, you're the poorest person in the world. It does not matter if you, are, if you have everything in your life or if you have nothing in your life. When the gospel comes to our life, it cuts away everything else and comes straight directly to our heart. So it did not matter and it does not matter that he's a king. It only matters that there's a place in his life that he has trusted Christ as Savior and Lord. And you watch, the Bible says in verse at number 28, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost you persuade me. He said, Paul, you have said so much. Paul, you have, you have shown me how to live and what it is to be a real Christian, not just to know about it, not just to have a religious experience and we're walking in a, and, and I'm going to decide to change my life, but you have shown me how that knowing Christ is different than anything else in the world. And I am almost persuaded to follow Jesus. Wow. Where did that come from? As we think about the distance between heaven and and hell. I want you to go back in chapter 25 and verse at number 14 and look at it with me and let's see how that King Agrippa comes uh, to this place that he has come to that he said, you have almost persuaded me, Paul. Look what he says in verse at number, number 14 of chapter 25. It was declared. It says this, and when, uh, and when uh, they had been there many days, Festus had declared Paul's case unto the king saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Felix. Here is someone that does not know Christ uh, who is declaring the cause of Christ through a man uh, that they know by the name of the Apostle Paul. Can I let you in on something today? Listen, your life and how you live for God and the testimony you have is not only something that you just carry around every single day, but every person that comes in contact with you and that you have an effect upon their lives for Christ. I want to tell you, they have something to declare about you, how that God is real in your life. Amen. How many of you believe today that your life can be that testimony and a bright light? Jesus said it like this in Matthew chapter number 5. He said, you are like a city has set on a hill. You are a light to the world. Paul, his light has shined so bright in the gospel that even Festus is declaring, I want you to know something about Paul. I want to declare his case. Look back in verse number 8 of chapter 25. And you understand something that is happening around Paul's life. We see in verse number 8 what happens. He says, and, and this is Paul speaking, While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar, have I offended anything at all. Wow, I want to tell you something about Paul. He said, I have offended not. There's something we see about the life of the Apostle Paul. That is, that he is now standing before a brand new a governor by the name of Festus. I know when you think of Festus, everybody in here just thought of gun smoke. When you think about Festus, he is the new governor. He has taken Felix's place. Felix 
hung out with Paul. He kept Paul right there by his side. The whole thing. He kept him in prison. He could have set him free, but he has kept him there. By the way, friend, I want to let you know something. Felix never trusted Christ that we know of. Can we understand? By the way, every single time someone came to Christ that had been there before, there was a testimony left in the Word. That there are an example, Nicodemus in the Bible. He was a religious man who came to Jesus by night, and, and Jesus said, "You must be born again." And so we watch Nicodemus. He walks away that night. We don't see him trusting Christ that night, but we see him later in the Scripture. And he said, "Oh, I want to be identified with Jesus." Did you know when you get saved, you want to be identified with Jesus? Amen. And so you watch. Here's Felix. He has he has left him there. Now now you watch Festus, the new governor that is taken over, and he is the chief of the Jews. Has asked. He said, "Look, Felix or Festus, will you send Paul back to Jerusalem? We want to kill him." Wow. It's amazing to me because Festus is in Caesarea of Philippi at the same place where Paul is. And so this whole time that he has heard the testimony from Felix, as Felix says, I want you to know about this man Paul that I've kept prisoner, all these things. He said, I'm declaring. And Paul said, I want you to know that I am innocent. There's no laws broken. The Jews came from Jerusalem to accuse him. He said, I offend not. As a matter of fact, Paul said, if I have done anything wrong he said I will gladly die wow I'll tell you something about Paul, the apostle Paul's life it was like Christ can I say something about our life look at somebody and say he's talking about us if we're saved our life should be like Christ Paul's life was blameless there was, you could pick up Paul's cell phone. There was no pictures on his cell phone. There was no, y'all believe there's no pictures on his cell phone? There was no bad pictures on, on, on his cell phone. There was nothing offensive on his cell phone. There was no website he had been to that he needed to cover up. Paul was a man whose heart was right with God. He was blameless in every area of his life. And so now, I so said, how in the world can King Agrippa what is going on with him as he hears uh, this testimony from Hephaestus? And now he's saying, I'm almost persuaded. I see this person that their life has totally changed, but I'm just not ready. Wow. When I think about that, I think about that place where he says, I insist in verse number 19, Paul says it like this, but certain had questioned against him of their own superstitions and of one at Jesus, which was dead. I love this. Look at verse number 19, the last part. Whom Paul affirmed to be what? How many of you believe Jesus is alive? Amen. Oh, and Paul said, he, did, he said, look at, look at what Paul said. He has affirmed, he is insisting, it is something that is planted. Oh, that Jesus is alive. I want to say something today. He is alive. Oh, he is the Savior of the world. He said, oh, only these, these superstitions have their own superstitions and of all these things that are going. But Paul has said, I have seen Jesus. He is alive. Verse number 25, look at it with me, of chapter 25. The Bible says, but I, this is Festus, he said, he's talking before King Agrippa. He said, but when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, and that he himself had appealed unto Augustus, I have determined to send him. Oh, you understand what is going on around their lives. And you see how that Paul, how this is the place where he is deemed innocent. He is declared by Festus that he is totally innocent. There's nothing wrong whatsoever. I love verse number 23 because he is brought before the king just like God said. Wow, Paul had no idea. In chapter 23, when God said, hey, Paul, I want, you, I want to let you know something. I'm going to send you to all of Rome. I'm going to let you preach the gospel to Rome. Paul's like, Lord, how in the world can I preach to Rome? Can I let you know what God did in the life of the Apostle Paul? Here he is now standing before the king. Oh, listen, no fault is found in him. He will be able to speak to all of Rome. 
awe when you look and you understand what is going on in that day. He is able to speak the truth before a king and before all of Rome. The Bible says in chapter number 26, look at it. The Bible said, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. He said, I want you to know something. The day has come, Paul. You are standing before a king. Wow. Not only before a king, before a whole camp, before a whole council. You are also standing in the place where, where these all have gathered to see you killed and to see your life over there just waiting upon judgment. Romans were bloodthirsty people. Oh, and they're waiting for somebody that their life would be open. He said, be over. Oh, he said, the day has come. Uh, verse number one lets us know that he is permitted in that day to speak before the king. He is invited. Oh, by King Agrippa, the door has now opened. Uh, Acts chapter 23 and verse number 11 says it like this, that you must bear witness also at Rome. Jesus says, how to Paul? He said, I want to let y'all know something. Did y'all know we go before people every single day that God Himself has created? He has called Him. He has called us a people. And we are the greatest creation upon this earth and the most treasured. And we have the privilege every single day of sharing Jesus with God's greatest gift. Oh, and you watch us, Paul. He is permitted. Oh, it's that place where all the cancel and it is all on public record. Everything that is going on is before Rome out of the hands of God. Why is Paul staying in prison? Why was Paul left there? I'm sure there may have been times in Paul's life. We look back and read this and we think Paul was like, yep, I'm glad I'm in prison. Can I let y'all know something? He was not a nutcase. He was a person. I'm sure there was days he was wondering, God, what in the world am I doing in prison? Amen. You ever wonder, God, what in the world is going on in my life? God, why are all these things happening around my life? Oh, and you watch Paul. How about now? Here it is over two years later. He is standing before the king. And he is getting to present his testimony of what the king of kings had did to him and for him on that road to Damascus. He says it like this. I love verse number 2 and verse number 3. You need to read verse number 2. I want you to look at it. We're going to look at these first few uh, words in verse number 2 where he said, I think myself what? Happy. Now some of y'all that done made you mad. You like to be mad. You ever watch people? There's some people they just like to be grumpy. I like those kind of people. I want to get right... I just want to get right at them, don't y'all? Y'all y'all watch grumpy people. Y'all are grumpy people, ain't you? I can tell. Paul said, "I want to let you know something, King Agrippa. You can watch King. You can watch Paul. He comes up. He's like King Agrippa. I just want to let you know something. I'm happy to be here." Glory to God, I got something better than anything in this world. I got something better than you sending me home. I got something better than you releasing me. I think myself, I know what I have. And I have a promise from God. And I am going to stand before you as the king. And I want you to know what has happened in my life. Y'all do understand sometimes in life, that life happens, right? Real life, where everything falls apart. Amen? Where everything is not there to be happy all the time. Paul said, I want you to know, I think myself happy. I am holding on to the promise of God in the place where I am standing before you, oh, King Agrippa. I think myself happy. Paul is happy not because he's in prison. Paul is happy because he's in the will of God. Paul is happy because he is standing before the king with a message of the, of the Savior of the world. Oh, he said, I'm happy to answer you. Oh, King Agrippa, he is standing between heaven and hell. You ever thought about our life? You ever thought about your testimony, why God gave you a testimony? You are standing in people's lives. You are standing there with them between heaven and hell. Your life and testimony may be the only thing that, put, that puts them to that place of being persuaded to follow Christ. Paul said, Glory to God, I'm glad to be here, King Agrippa. 
I'm standing in your presence, King Agrippa, and I want you to know something. I, have, I am here. He said, wherefore, I beseech thee, hear me patiently. I've got a long story to tell, and I want to tell it to you. He, he is standing before the king to tell his story. From verse number 4 all the way down to verse number 11, he is talking to the king, and he said, I want you to know something. I was in prison. I'm sure this king's going, you in prison now? And I'll let you know something. When life has you in bondage, if you have Jesus, you still are free. Paul said, I was in bondage. And he goes to tell from verse number 4 all the way down through verse number 11. He tells about his life. I was, I was young and from my youth I had been taught. He said, I was a Pharisee. I, I am changed. Now I was in prison because I believed the resurrection of Jesus. I persecuted believers. I was a murderer. I was living in a prison in my life. Friend, I want to tell you this morning. You may be living in a prison in your life. You may be bound to sin, chained by sin, chained by addiction. But can I let you know something? Listen, you can stand before a king and declare that you are set free because Jesus can set you free. Amen? You may be chained this morning by your past. But I want to tell you, we have a Savior who is there to deliver. I want you to look in verse number 16. It would probably take me three hours to preach this whole message. Y'all with me? All right. Look in verse number 16. The Bible says in verse number 16 of chapter number 26. She said, stand up. Y'all hear that? Verse number 16 says, but rise. I believe she was prophesying over in that corner, don't y'all? Verse number 16 says, but rise. Stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this, for this what? Purpose. To make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in, in the which I will appear unto thee. I, wanna, I just want to anchor it down right here for just a second. Can I let you know something? Verse number 16 can apply to every one of our lives. You ever had guilt over sin? Amen. Even after you're saved, there's things that may haunt us. I love verse number 16. He said, Paul, it's time for you to get up. I have a purpose for you. It's time to wash away and understand I have forgiven everything. Get up. I have a purpose for your life. Live in that purpose. He said, you have been delivered. He said, rise up. You're trusting, up. You're trusting the Savior. Listen, rise up from where you are. He said, oh yeah, there's a reason how the Bible says in verse number number 19 and verse verse number all the way down through verse number 21. He said, this is my reason I'm here. I'm here to show you how to repent. That little word repent that we understand is a word that God is giving to, to the Apostle Paul. He said, look, I'm here so that you can repent. That word repent, it means to turn to the Savior. It means to turn uh, from where you are and the life you are living and turn uh, to Jesus that He died on the cross and He rose again and that we can believe Him and trust Him. Uh, that word repent means, God, I am going to follow after You. Oh, He said, I'm here to show them to repent, to turn to God and to do the works they need to do. Uh, so He is saying all this in front of King Agrippa. He said, I just want you to know something. I have a reason in my life. He said, I've been rescued. I love at verse number 22 and 23, he said, I obtained help from God. I may be glad he come to help you one day, amen? That word delivered. And I want you to see the very last part. When we look from verse number, verse number 24 all the way down through verse number 26, it reminds me of something this morning. The gospel demands a decision. When you see Paul uh, standing before King Agrippa, and King Agrippa answers him, uh, Paul, I'm almost persuaded when we are confronted that Jesus is the Savior of the world, and that we have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and there's only one way for our sin to be forgiven, and that is the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. It is only there oh, that we have that place of decision. I love what Paul said. He said, I'm persuaded about something. 
verse number 24, down through verse number 26, he said, I, I, I love this verse of Scripture. So Festus has now heard Paul. He has already heard his testimony. He's already read every single log and every record that there is about Paul and why he is still in prison. And he says in verse number 24, look at it with me, uh, verse number 24, and as he thus spoke for himself, Festus said, or Fest, the Bible says here, Festus said with a what? That was quiet. With a what? Loud voice. Oh, Festus, he says, Paul, thou art beside thyself. He said, much learning hath made thee what? Mad. He said, Paul, you have done went crazy. He said, this Jesus stuff that you are talking about has already drove you completely crazy, Paul. There's no way that in somebody's life that they can come and they can ask Jesus to forgive them and He'll forgive them. You can repent of your sin. I know there's got to be works you do. I, I, Festus, you can see him trying to play it out. But what about my good works? And then they're going to outweigh my bad works. You can watch Festus say, yeah, but I got a lot of stuff going on and I know how God is okay with what I got going on in my life. And I'm going to be all right. Festus said, oh, Paul, listen, you have, you have been learning and you have just kept on and now uh, you are completely crazy. Can I let you in on something? The world may think you're crazy. But I'll tell you what, they'll think you're crazy till they need you. till they understand that God has so radically changed uh, your life. Oh, that you are changed forever. Paul, he answers, he said, I just want to let you know something. I am not crazy crazy. I am serving a God who is able. He said, oh, but speak forth the words. He said, I speak forth the words of truth and of soberness for the king. Look in verse number 26 and you see what happens. Paul so persuaded, he said, for the king knoweth of these things. How does Paul know the king knows? That conversation that he has just had with him about his whole life being transformed, his whole life being changed, about trusting Jesus, Savior and Lord of his life, about Paul uh, saying, look, I want to let you know something. My life has been totally changed. He said the king knows, he understands every single thing that is, uh, that is here. He said, before whom I speak freely, in verse number 26, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this was not done in a corner. I just want to let you in on something. God does not have secret service disciples. Amen? When you are a disciple of Christ, how you follow Him and live for Him every single day, everywhere you are. And Paul said, everything that I have done is in the open. He knows. He understands. He gets it. And then I want you to look down this verse of Scripture in verse number 27 and 28 that we read. He says, Oh, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I'm not sure all of King Agrippa's background other than what I've read about a little bit, but you think about King Agrippa for just a minute. Oh, you think about his life that he knew about the prophets. He knew the word how that Paul was speaking. He understood every single thing how that Paul had somewhere in the life of old King Agrippa. How he had the knowledge of knowing how that the word is true and that God is true. Oh, and the Bible says, we understand. He said, do you believe? And then Paul said, I know you believe. Paul said, I know you get it, King Agrippa. You understand the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. You understand the salvation of the Lord. And if you'll just come to Him, He'll save you. I remember He's glad it's that simple. Amen? But He says, King Agrippa, man, when I read verse number 26, there's other verses in the Bible that kind of go with verse number 26. One, my mind goes to a, a scripture in Mark chapter number 10 where a young man comes running to Jesus and he said, oh, Jesus, what must I do to have eternal life? Jesus said, oh, I'm going to tell you what you do. He said, oh, you, you, you fulfill the law. He said, oh, I've done that from my youth up. I've never, I, I've, I've always done the Ten Commandments. 
Can I just let you in on something? Look around in this room right here right quick. Hurry. Look around right quick. Nobody in this room has ever fulfilled all the Ten Commandments except Jesus that's in this room. Amen? He said, bear not false witness. Anybody in here ever told a lie in your life? Ever? I knew there'd be at least two in here that had told a lie. He said, Lord, I've done all that for my youth up. And Jesus said, well, I know what you have. He said, why don't you go sell all that you have and give to the poor? You can have eternal life. The Bible says that young man looked at Jesus and he went away grieved. Because God had spoke to his heart. It wasn't about all that he had given to the poor. It was about his heart of where he was. He was like, oh, I want to attain the next chapter of my life. Now I want to follow you, Jesus. Can I just let you in on something? You don't just decide one day, I'm just going to follow Jesus. It's him speaking to your heart. It has been, it has been presented to King Agrippa. And King Agrippa, you know, you understand. And, and the Bible says in verse number 27, right here that we're reading, or verse number 28, that he is going to miss his pardon. The place that King Agrippa, he can pardon Paul at any second in this journey. But Paul is not the one who needs pardon. Paul is the one who is living free because he knows Christ in his heart. And the Bible says that the Word, the Son of God, will set you free. Amen. King Agrippa is the one who is living bound. And as he is living bound, he said, I'm almost persuaded. I'm at the edge, Paul, of giving my life to Jesus. Wow, that word almost persuaded. Let's just know that the distance between heaven and hell is about this much. Almost persuaded. I almost believe, Paul. I'm almost ready to give my life. But rather than choose pardon and choose forgiveness and choose a Jesus and choose heaven in my life, I choose hell. Because I'm almost persuaded is the same as totally rejecting. Wow. He said, I choose death. Paul, I'm just going to choose rejection of this story you just told me. I believe it. I know it's true. And I, I see your life and I see how you've done it. But I'm, I'm almost persuaded. But I, I'm just not going to today. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. You know something I found out about life as I go through life even more? We're not promised another second. God gives us promises all through the Word for every single day of our life, but He does not promise us we'll be here tomorrow. He said, I'm almost persuaded. Man, if I just, I tell you what, Paul, just, I'm just going to wait just a little longer. I'm just going to, I tell you what, Paul, I, 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 maybe next time I, you come before me or the next time I see you I, somewhere, I'm going to give my life to Jesus. I wish we could hear the stories in hell of all the people who thought next time or next place I'm going to give my life to Jesus. I'm almost persuaded, but I think I'm just going to wait. You know what Paul said that affects every single one of us? Look in verse number 29. Paul said it like this. Paul said, I would to God that not only that, but also all they hear me this day were both almost and altogether as I am except for these bonds. Paul said, I, I, my prayer is that every single person on the sound of my voice in this Colosseum I, that is filled in Rome, and as I stand here I, before you, I want you to know, Paul, that you all need Jesus. The greatest thing we have today, friends, that people come to know Jesus is the hope in Christ and knowing that He's the Savior of the world. I want to ask you today, are you almost persuaded? Are you almost persuaded that the people around us need to be persuaded? 
Paul says in verse number 29, he said, okay, King Agrippa, if you're not going to believe, that's up to you. Everybody needs Jesus. And all y'all need to know, whether the king accepts Christ or not, whether he believes or not, everybody needs Jesus. Do we believe tonight, today, as, believe, as Christians, that everybody needs Jesus? Oh, we should live a life as the Apostle Paul, showing that everybody needs Jesus. Paul's innocence, innocence is declared by King Agrippa. As he stands before him, he's done nothing worthy of death. Therefore, because he has appeared, if he, if he had not appealed unto Caesar, and I could let him go right this second, but he has appealed unto Caesar. And because he is, by the way, can I just let you know something? When Paul was doing that, he was just getting to tell his story more and more and more. But he said, if it wasn't for that, I could let you go, Paul. He declared the innocence of Paul, but King Agrippa lived on in his own guilt of being almost crucified. Let's stand together with heads bowed and eyes closed this morning. Thank you for hearing the Word of God. Friend, I want you to know today, there is no one that loves you like Jesus. The Bible lets us know that it is a love that God has given us that is greater than anything else in this world. It's a love that will never die, never end. His love is a love that will change the world and has changed the world forever. And it's saved this morning. Pastor, as I listen to the Apostle Paul as he stands before Festus, as he stands before King Agrippa, as he stands before this Colosseum of people, he just told his story. You say this morning, Pastor, in my life as a Christian, I need to come because you know what? I need to tell my story. I've got friends and people around me that, are, that fit in verse number 29 in that place that I would to God they would come to Christ. And I tell you what, you may be their only hope. You may be their only testimony as they're here. And maybe this morning you just need to come and say, God, I want to pray for them. I want to pray that you, God, would speak to them and use me in their life. Lord, I just want to be a light. Maybe this morning, we just need to say, God, I want you to clean my lamp off. As a, as a Christian, I remember in my granny's house, we used to burn old, old lamps. Man, those things, when you flip them on, that'd be so bright. Wouldn't be long because they kept burning. You had the wick turned up a little bit. Those things would begin to get smoky. That glass would just get smoky. You'd have to turn them off, cool them down, trim the wick, clean that glass off so it could be bright again. As Christians, sometimes we just need to clean our globe off. God, help me to see again what you want me to see. Help me to see who I need to be. God, what you want to do in my life. Listen, would you come this morning as a believer? God, help me to shine for your glory. Maybe today you say, you know something in my life? I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm kind of like King Agrippa, Festus. I'm hearing the word and I know what Christ has said. I'm almost persuaded. Paul, oh, but just not ever really committed. I've not given it all. I've not said, yes, Lord, I want to follow you. Maybe today you need to understand and, and do understand what Paul said. He said, I've come for this purpose, that you might repent means to turn from our sin. You say, I don't even have a clue how to turn. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We know we have the guilt of sin because we're a sinner. But the Bible says that Jesus himself, God said the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ. Our Lord. And he said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Friend, I want to let you know something this morning. God wants to save you. God wants to change you. God wants to cleanse you. You say this morning, preacher, I just need to give my life to Christ. The Bible says, and let's just know, if we call upon him, he'll save us. It's that place of, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I realize, Jesus, that you died on the cross for me. That's not just something I do. It's not just something I can say. It's not just words that come out of my mouth. Lord, you said, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart, God, that you was raised from the dead, I could be saved. And Lord, right now, I commit my life to you. And so you may need to come. We want to take God's word and show you exactly what God said, how you can have the assurance of eternal life. You don't have to live like King Agrippa, almost persuaded. He said this morning, Pastor, I need to come. I need Christ in my life. Listen, Paul said it's not about religious. It's not about being in that prison of, of doing things, King Agrippa. It's about a relationship of knowing Jesus, Savior and Lord. He said this morning, I need Christ in my life. Man, I want to tell you, he's able. Hallelujah. He said this morning, Pastor. Pastor, I'm really not sure.
about my salvation, about knowing the Lord. But I am concerned. I want you to pray for me. If you just slip your hand up, I'm going to come to you, say anything. If you just say, hey, I, I think you pray for me. I want to know. Thank you. God bless you. I want to know in my life, without a doubt, that I know Christ in my life. Listen, he loves us. He wants us to commit to him. And say, if anyone else, you say, you know something, I'm really not sure about my life without being saved, but I want to know it. Just pray for me. I want to know. I want, I want to know God is speaking to me. I want to know. I know him. God bless your heart. Thank you. Thank you for being honest with God. Thank you for being honest with God. This morning you say, Pastor, in my life today as a believer, you know something, I've, in my life personally this morning, wow, God is just speaking to me about people that are around me and need Christ in, my, in their lives. And I want to be that light to them. If you just lift your hand up and say, God, I want to be a testimony. I want to be a light for you, Lord, wherever I go. God bless you. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for being so good to us. God, thank you for your word. God, as you've just led us through the book of Acts, Lord, I praise you. And you know exactly where we are every step of the way. And Lord, I ask you, God, Lord, to help us to be faithful to you, obedient to you, God, to walk in your word. God, I pray for those of us who, who believe and have trusted you as Savior and Lord. God, thank you for that testimony you gave me at the age of 17 years old of trusting you as my Savior and Lord of my life. Lord, thank you for coming in my life. Lord, I pray that I would share that everywhere I go and be a light for you, God. Lord, to share what you have done in my life. Father, I want to pray, God, right now for all of us, we have people around us, Lord, that we can, we can share your love with. God, I want to ask you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that those in this building this morning, God, that you're just speaking to and working on, and God, speaking through your word to about salvation. Lord, would you help them, God, to know you. God, from the youngest to the oldest, Lord, that lifted their hands. Lord, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, they would know without a doubt. God, they would be able to trust your word. God, you said faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word. Thank you, God, for how you produce that faith in us to believe and trust in you through your word. God, we ask you right now, Lord, to bless and move on our lives. Help us to lift you up, to love you, and to serve you. Thank you, God, for being so good. Lord, thank you for making it so simple. God, you said if I just call upon you, Lord, here I am, God, I'm a sinner. I believe your word teaches me that I sin and come short of you. I believe, Jesus, you died for me on the cross. You was buried and you rose again. And Jesus, I ask you to come into my life, forgive my sins. Save me, Jesus. Lord, thank you for your forgiveness when I simply call upon you and I give my life to you to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I want to say, oh, what a Savior, amen. I'm glad he's alive and well, aren't you? Amen. I want to give God thanksgiving for all of his blessings in our life. Thank him for being so good to us. Thank you so much for being here this morning. And I'm glad that you are able to be here, not sick. Say amen right there. Praise the Lord. And pray for those who are sick and all that are uh, going on around us that are sick. So please remember all this that is going on. Uh, remember all those great announcements there in your bulletin. We'll ha also try to have those up so everybody can look at them, website and all that stuff. Uh, but I want to say I appreciate y'all. How many of you think it's uh, cold in here this morning? I do. I, I'm lying. Okay. Uh, we, we, we have, uh, we're re having to readjust our stuff. You raise your hand, brother. Okay, I was just making sure. Amen. Uh, we, uh, 